Hello fellow Classic Foes, this is Fulcrum and welcome to my comprehensive guide for new airsoft players. Now us experienced airsofters were all that rental guy at some point. In fact, here's me from about 7 years ago at my first airsoft event. Yeah, it wasn't exactly a big threat to the enemy team. Now there's already tons of information online for the new airsofter, but we're going to condense it all into one complete guide which should tell you everything you need to know so you can go out onto the airsoft battlefield and kick some ass. If you find this guide helpful then make sure you leave a like, and if you've got friends that are interested in airsoft and thinking of starting then, why not share this video with them? Now, for starters, what is airsoft? Airsoft is a competitive shooting sport where players shoot at one another with airsoft guns with the intent of eliminating each other from the game. Airsoft guns typically fire 6mm plastic pellets, commonly and incorrectly referred to as BBs. Airsoft is much more realistic than paintball and laser tag and is often used by military and law enforcement for training purposes. Airsoft is a physically challenging sport, especially woodland and field airsoft. That being said, airsoft is perfectly safe when played correctly with proper PPE, which conveniently segues us onto our next chapter. Now personal protective equipment or PPE is the most vital thing in airsoft, in fact don't even think about buying anything else for your loadout until your PPE is absolutely perfect. Now eye protection is the most important piece of PPE. Now airsoft guns can and will cause permanent blindness so please think twice before you start buying cheap goggles. Make sure you buy your eye protection from a certified airsoft dealer so you're not buying any of the cheap stuff you might get on AliExpress or eBay. And I cannot stress this enough, do not skimp out on eye protection. You only get one pair of eyes. Now I would personally avoid mesh goggles. Even high quality BBs can shatter upon impact and even though those shards won't be going that fast, if they go through your mesh they're going to end up in your eye and sharp bits of plastic in your eye is not a good idea. Now obviously you want to make sure that your eye protection fits you and you also want to make sure that there's no sort of loose areas in it where it might jump upwards or there might be any gaps which form or they might fall off your face. You want to make sure that they will stay on your head at all times. Now these are my personal goggles, these are Battle Axe fan goggles. Not only do they accommodate my glasses, which is a big plus for me because otherwise I'll be shooting blind, they also have a fan built into the top. Now goggles will fog up as you're playing, especially as you're getting hot and sweaty and in the colder months. And if these goggles fog up, I just flick the fan on for a few minutes and they're perfectly clear. I would definitely recommend these, especially if you have fogging problems and especially if you wear glasses. Now the next piece of PPE you want to consider is some lower face protection. Now under 18s are required to have lower face protection, although some sites might require all players to wear it, especially CQB sites. Now if you're old enough and your site allows it, you may choose not to wear any lower face protection. However, if you choose to do so, you must recognise that it is your responsibility if you get your teeth shot out. If you're going to turn up with all of this expensive gear, like a 300-400 pound gun, but not bother spending 15 quid on a piece of mesh, we don't want to hear about it when you get your teeth shot out. We don't want to hear about how expensive dentistry is. Even when there's a no headshot rule on site, trying to avoid shooting someone in the head is very difficult. BBs fly all over the place. There's thousands of plastic balls flying around in the air at an airsoft site. Eventually one of them is going to hit you in the face. So if you choose not to cover your teeth up, it is on your head if you start losing them. Now ear protection and throat protection is entirely up to you, it's not usually required on site. I find that neck shots aren't that bad so I don't bother with any neck protection. Now I have encountered one person who got a BB lodged in their ear. However with my PPE the goggle straps go straight over my ears so there's not really any way you can get a BB in my ears at all. Touch wood. Now you can get a full face protection which is where they combine the goggles with the lower face protection as one unit. I would personally recommend that you keep your eye protection and your lower face protection separate because it means you can pull down your mesh and have a drink or whatever without having to compromise your eye protection. Now full face protection can be quite convenient because you don't have to worry about losing bits of it. Now as you can tell this gas mask isn't exactly fitting me perfectly, I need to put some more foam in the side to straighten it out. I'm also fogging up quite badly on the left eye even though there is a fan in this filter and it's pretty unpleasant in this bloody thing and as you can hear it's quite hard to talk through as well. However a gas mask at my local site will actually neutralise green smoke which is classed as toxic smoke in gameplay. Oh, right that's that done. Let's move on to boots. For boots you want to get yourself a decent pair of hiking or combat boots to protect your ankles whilst you're playing on the airsoft field. And in my experience I would recommend some Miltech combat boots. And of course make sure you look after them. If you've got zips down the side make sure you keep the mud out of them otherwise the zips will jam and break. And again, don't skimp out because these might save you a trip to the hospital. And to make your boots more comfortable, get yourself some anti-blister socks. These things pay dividends. So, you got your PPE all sorted out. Let's get some battle dress. Now, 
Now most airsoft sites would let you wear whatever you want, but if you want to do it properly, you want to get yourself some battle dress. Now you don't even have to wear camo, at the very least you should wear solid colours which match the environment in which you'll be playing in. The camo I like to wear is British Woodland DPM or Disruptive Pattern Material. Now this camo works really well in woodland environments, I've nearly been trodden on several times wearing this stuff. For now you want to keep to 2 deep camouflage, ghillie suits are great in their own right but it's probably not the best thing to start with because they're heavy, you'll cook in the summer and they'll snag on absolutely everything on the field. Now you want to get yourself some combat trousers as well and you can pick up this sort of stuff from military surplus online or military surplus stores and some airsoft shops even stock this sort of stuff. Another piece of battle dress worth grabbing is a Denison smock. Now these things are basically big heavy duty waterproofs with loads of pockets and as you can see this is in the British DPM pattern as well. And these things are absolutely brilliant especially on windy wet days where you'll just freeze otherwise and it's also really good for laying on wet ground because normally you'll just whip all the water up into your clothing and it will be horrible. So it's definitely worth getting yourself a Denison smock just in case the weather takes a turn for the worst. And for the winter it goes without saying wear some thermals underneath. Next up is my favourite bit because to play airsoft you need airsoft guns. So now that we've got the basics done, let's get on to the fun bit, which is getting your first airsoft gun. Now most sites will not limit the amount of guns you're allowed on your person, although in my opinion any more than two starts to get a bit unwieldy. However, we're going to start with just the one gun, and you can play perfectly fine with just one gun. I still do it now sometimes when I can't be bothered to bring a sidearm. Whilst a sidearm is a nice thing to have, it is not essential for most loadouts. Right now you want to stick with an AEG, which is an automatic electric gun. To start off with they're very easy to source and also to buy parts for and most of them by default have a fully automatic mode and you will need that as a beginner. And by far the best reason is that they are not affected by the cold like gas guns and they are very easy to use. For your first gun I recommend that you get yourself a carbine. Carbines are a happy medium between submachine guns and assault rifles. If you're going to be playing in closer quarter engagements then a submachine gun will probably work better because it's slightly smaller. And having a full length assault rifle can help you out in larger engagements. And whilst it might not be as accurate or have as much reach as a full length assault rifle, it will be nice and compact, so it will be a nice little gun and it should get the job done. Now there are four brands that I would definitely recommend for your first airsoft gun, and they are Cyma, JG, Ares and G&G. Cyma have a massive range of incredibly well made airsoft guns, and the internals for the most part have no proprietary parts, so when you come to upgrading it if you ever do, it's very easy to source parts for them. Their externals are also incredibly well built, they are very solid and they feel really nice. Simers as well are not fussy when it comes to magazines, which is a great thing because it means you can buy any brand magazine and it will work. Simers are also incredibly reliable as well. You buy one, it will last you and then you can upgrade it and it will last you a very long time. Now Simer, unlike a lot of airsoft brands, do this incredible thing. They don't just make M4s. In fact, the Simer AK family is absolutely legendary with its reliability. So if you want to get yourself a nice AK platform, a Simer AK is the way to go. It will last you, especially if you're a beginner. Simer MP5s are also incredibly robust and they have lovely externals. JG also make a lot of incredibly well-built guns. The JG G608 family, based on the real G36, are incredibly well-built and often used as sight rentals. The one thing I'll say about the G36 platform, the magazines are fatter than M4 mags, so trying to get them into a pouch might be a bit of a pain. On the plus side you can clip them together and the high cap G36 mags hold nearly 500 rounds. And I'll tell you, when I first started and I was using a G36 rental, I needed every single one of those nearly 500 rounds. The Combat Machine family made by G&G are legendary in the world of Airsoft. Even the basic models are incredibly well built for their price and also they perform really well too. The only thing I don't like about G&G replicas is that they are incredibly fussy when it comes to magazines. You basically have to use their mags. Which is why I can't recommend G&G as strongly as our next brand. Now in my opinion, the best brand of gun for a beginner is Ares Amoeba. Now my Ares Amoeba CCR here costs around £150-£160. It is the least fussy gun I own when it comes to magazines. It's also very lightweight and very compact. But the performance of this gun is absolutely outrageous. Despite the fact this thing has a tiny inner barrel, it's incredibly accurate and the range of it is insane. This thing seems to have a maximum range of about 65 meters, which for an AEG is bloody good. This thing is also incredibly reliable. It's had several thousand rounds for it and the only thing I've changed was a hot rubber. And the only reason why it's got a new hot rubber was because I tore the old one whilst I was checking it because I thought it had worn out. It was perfectly fine. I just tore it by mistake whilst putting it back in. Now I don't really like the M4 platform that much because it's so common, but annoyingly it is probably the best platform to start with because it's incredibly easy to get parts for and it's also very easy to source a gun in the first place. So my recommendation for your first gun is an Ares Amoeba CCR, you'll be blown away by the performance of these and it's incredibly good value, it's not that expensive and 
I can't even I can't even fathom how well this performs even right now even though it's had so many thousands of rounds through it it performs exactly like it did on day one so get yourself one of these if you want a really awesome beginner's gun but of course with a gun you also need magazines now the best type of magazine to begin with is a high cap now high cap mags tend to hold between 300 to 500 rounds depending on the gun an M4 mag holds about 300 rounds for example they're very quick to load all you've got to do is pull back the hatch chuck some BBs in lock it shut and wind it up they're also relatively cheap and easy to get a hold of the only thing about high caps though little noisy but high caps are probably the best magazine to start with because you don't need a speed loader you just chuck bb's in the top wind it once it's in the gun and you're good to go however if you want to sacrifice your round count for some stealthiness get yourself some mid caps mid caps do not suffer from the battle rattle nor do you have to wind them however there are a few downsides to mid caps for starters they hold less than high caps so you're going to need more to get an equivalent ammo count you will also need a speed loader to load them whereas high caps you can drop them in a bag of bb's scoop them over the top and have them loaded basically instantly and also mid caps can be more expensive for starters though stick with high caps they're just easier now since aegs are electric you're going to need some battery packs to start off with, stay away from any lithium based battery and stick with NIMHs. Now a lot of airsoft guns come with an NIMH battery in the box as standard. They are perfectly usable, I still use them now although you won't get as much kick out of them as a LiPo. However charging these is a lot easier, you can use a standard trickle charger, you don't even need a smart charger. For battery voltage, 8.4V or 9.6V will be perfectly fine. And the higher the milliamp hour rating, the longer the battery will last. Now you do want to get yourself a backup battery as well. That way if your battery runs out on the field you can swap the battery out rather than having to go back to the safe zone and get it charged. For now a Tamiya connector will be perfectly fine even though Dean's connectors are superior. Stick with Tamiya for now, don't worry about trying to wire your batteries to a different connector. Now you can charge NIMHs with a trickle charger but a smart charger is a nice thing to have. Buy yourself a decent smart charger and you won't have to worry about overcharging batteries and it will also make them last longer. This will also open the door to more exotic batteries as well later on. Make sure you disconnect your batteries after use and store them in a cool place away from sunlight. Next up you're going to need some plastic to throw. 99% of airsoft guns are 6mm calibre. You do rarely get some 8mm airsoft guns but they are incredibly rare and they're not the thing for beginners. Now you want to get a decent brand of ammunition. In my experience GFC rockets and BLS BBs are incredibly good. The most important number you want to pay attention to with your ammunition is the weight. In this case these are 0.25s by BLS. Specter arms are owned by BLS so these are BLS BBs at the end of the day. Now 0.25 gram BBs work really well with 350 FPS AEGs. 0.25 grams gives you a good blend of value and performance. You'll get a lot of them in a bag and the performance is really good. The heavier the BB weight, the less they are affected by wind. However, the heavier you go, the less velocity they'll have, so they'll take longer to get to the target. So for now, with your 350 FPS AEG, stick with 0.25s and they'll be absolutely fine. Now, if you do not have a Yukara registration in the UK, you will have to have a two-tone airsoft gun. Now, 51% of a two-tone airsoft gun is painted a really bright, obvious colour like blue, yellow, orange, or lime green. The idea behind this is to stop you from confusing it with a real gun, although, in my opinion, anything that looks like a real gun should be presumed as a real gun until proven otherwise. And just because your gun is two-tone doesn't mean you should be walking around in public with it, flashing it around, and do not use them for Halloween costumes. To transport airsoft guns safely and properly, get yourself either a gun case or a gun bag. Failing that, use the cardboard box that the gun came in. And like I said, do not walk around with airsoft guns exposed in public, you're going to freak a lot of people out. Now attachments on an airsoft gun are entirely up to you, but you can use a gun completely plain. If you want to put a sight on it, go ahead. If you want to chuck a grip on it, go ahead, it's up to you, but you can use a gun completely bare and completely stock. Now I recommend that you don't start fiddling with airsoft guns. If it works perfectly fine, leave it alone. Now if you are going to try and do some work to your airsoft gun, make sure you know exactly what you're doing. In my opinion, what you want to do is you want to use your gun first, you want to let it bed in, you want to make sure it's perfectly tuned up, get your hops zeroed, get your sights zeroed, use it first before you start deciding about upgrades. As we all know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. To set your hop unit, you want an ever so slight bump in the trajectory, so that way you'll get as much range as possible. You don't want too much of a bump, otherwise the BB will stall, and that's known as overhopping. If you don't have any backspin on your shots at all, you'll be seriously robbing yourself of range. Make sure you stick with one type of BBs. If you're going to change weight of BBs, you're going to have to readjust your hop unit. Get your hop set to two fives and get your sights zeroed, and that should be it. Right, so you've got all this new equipment, but now you need somewhere to put it. Let's get some tack gear. Now you can run around with magazines in your pocket, however it's a better option to get yourself a basic tactical vest. For now you want to stay clear of plate carriers and battle belts, so a bit overkill for what you need as a starting player. My personal recommendation for a tack vest is this Viper Low Profile Tack Vest. It has 6 5.56 mag pouches and it can even hold G36 mags. It's nice and low profile so it doesn't catch on things. And it also has plenty of pockets for things other than magazines like medication and batteries. Now if you have any medication like EpiPens or inhalers, make sure you carry them on you at all times. 
and make sure your medication is easy to get to. That way, if you keel over on the field, the people attending to you can get your medication easily. It is also worth carrying a spare battery with you. That way, if you do have to change a battery, you don't have to walk all the way back to safe zone to get a new battery. Now, it's not a bad idea to carry a multi-tool on you as well. For example, if you fill your flash suppressor with mud, you can use a knife on a multi-tool to clear it out. Now, gloves are a nice thing to have as well. They will help protect your hands from any sort of sharp and stinging plants like nettles and brambles for the most part. And they will also help you when you're climbing around and they also help camouflage your hands. Now, they don't have to be anything too fancy. They could be a pair of old work gloves for God's sake. Now, when it comes to headwear, I don't wear helmets. I don't like them, but you can wear a helmet if you want. Now, I personally prefer wearing a cap or a beanie. Now, a multi-scarf is a great thing to have, especially in the winter because it's just that extra layer of insulation. They are also multi-purpose, so you can use them as a hat or you can use them as a neck covering like I've got here. You can use them however you want, really. And for the cold events, I recommend you get yourself a trapper's hat. I absolutely love this thing, and I wore it at the last airsoft event I played, which was about minus two, and I was lovely and cosy wearing this. Didn't help with the fog, and it didn't really help with the fact that people were cheating that day. However, at least my head was warm. Now, I strongly recommend that you get yourself a good sling for your gun. Now, I quite like these Magpul slings because they can be used as a double point sling or as a single point sling. Now this setup's not great, but this is just an example setup, but I've got the Amoeba on a single point sling like so, so it can just hang down like that. I've got my hands free, but I can quickly grab it and bring it up if I need to. Now make sure you get yourself a decent quality sling because you do not want your gun dropping on the floor. Now I personally recommend that you use a loop of paracord to mount your sling to your sling mount. Now without this, what can happen is your sling can actually wear down your sling mount as you're running around, so I would recommend you use this paracord loop to stop that. Now dump pouches are not essential, but I recommend that you do get one because it means you don't have to fight an empty magazine back into your attack vest you can just drop it in the dump pouch and forget about it until you load up now when it comes to hydration you can easily carry a bottle of water in your pocket although you can buy some canteen bottles which will clip onto your belt now the best solution to hydration is a camel pack you don't have to get one but it's a nice thing to have especially in the summer if you do get one of these make sure you flush it out after each use and sterilize it before the next use and make sure you clean the mouthpiece out do not forget about it I have before and it's absolutely grim now last but no means least you want to make sure you have somewhere to store your ammunition now some people store their ammunition in plastic bottles, however it gets quite noisy when you're running around. Now I personally recommend these fabric ammo bags because you can hold an awful lot of ammunition in them considering their small size and also they're very quiet. Now if you have two different types of ammunition, i.e. two weights, make sure you keep them separate so they don't contaminate each other. So you're all kitted up now and you found an airsoft site to go to. So let's talk about your first airsoft event. Now the night before your first airsoft event you want to make sure all of your batteries are fully charged including your spare ones. Make sure you arrive nice and early to your airsoft site and that you get yourself booked in as soon as you get there. Now before you start wandering around talking to people get everything ready. Make sure you put your boots, battle dress and tack gear on properly. Load all of your magazines up and put them in your tack vest. Put a battery in your gun. Take your gun over to the chrono area. Now chronoing an airsoft gun is where we measure the muzzle velocity of the gun to make sure it is within sight limits. In the UK the sort of typical number for AEGs is 350 FPS on a 0.2 gram BB. When you get to the chrono area keep your guns unloaded and wait in queue if there is one. Make sure you have your PPE on before you go into the firing range as well. Now you want to make sure you know the weight of your BB so if you're using 0.25s you can tell the marshal chronoing I'm using 0.25s in this gun. That way the marshals can then calculate the equivalent velocity on 0.2s. Once your gun has been chronoed you will usually have a tag or sticker applied to your gun by a marshal to signify that it has passed. Make sure your gun is cleared so drop the magazine out, fire some semi-auto shots in the safe direction and put the gun on safe. When walking around safe zone make sure your gun is on safe and your finger nowhere near the trigger. And whilst you're in safe zone please do not dry fire your gun, there is no reason to do it. Dry firing is where you fire your gun even when there's no ammunition in it. On the lots of airsoft sites as it should be this can be a bannable offence. If you do have to fire your gun for some reason, if you must dry fire your gun, go to the range and do it. Do not do it in the safe zone. You should be treating your gun as if it is loaded at all times, because all it takes is that one round wedged in your gun that you didn't know about to fly across safe zone and you could have blinded someone. So please do not dry fire your gun in safe zone, and if you do, I hope you get banned. And I'm honestly deadly serious about that. I get sick to death of people dry firing in safe zones. You do not realise how dangerous it is what you are doing. I'm no saint, I've done it before, but we should really be cracking down on dry firing in safe zones. It should not be accepted at all. Go to the range, you bunch of lazy butt. Right, dry firing round over. Where were we? Oh yeah, that's it. When you go to safety briefing, make sure you are listening properly. If there are any questions you have, make sure you ask the marshals. And if for some reason you have turned up late to the event, make sure you get filled in on everything you need to know. 
Unless you're about to fire a gun, make sure your finger is out of the trigger guard like so. This is known as trigger discipline. And even when you're out on the field, between games, make sure your safety's on and your finger off the trigger. Now, if you do encounter someone you think is cheating, do not get angry, do not get arsy about it. Tell a marshal immediately and do not take things into your own hands. Now, you must remember we are firing airsoft guns. They do not shoot a mile and they're not that accurate compared to the real thing. So someone you think might be shrugging their hits, you might be dropping five meters short off, you just don't know. Now if you do encounter someone you suspect is cheating, make sure you tell a marshal and just keep firing at them. Please do not take things into your own hands, you're not there to enforce the rules, the marshals are. If nothing is being done about someone who's blatantly cheating and the marshals aren't doing anything, go tell the site owner, because they should hopefully pull some strings and get some things sorted out. And even then, if nothing gets done and that site is horrifically bad for cheating, just don't go there again. It'll just wind you up, don't even bother going back. And of course, make sure you take your own hits. If you think you've been hit but you're not sure, then just take the hit. It's much easier than dealing with someone getting the arse with you. And at lunch or at the end of the day when you're returning to safe zone, make sure you clear your gun and put it on safe. Just a reminder to clear your gun, you drop your magazine out your gun, you fire some shots in the safe direction and you put your gun on safe. And even though you've cleared your gun, you still want to treat it as loaded and dangerous. Don't go around pointing it at people in safe zone and make sure your gun is on safe. And as you're packing up at the end of the day, one crucial thing I recommend is that you disconnect the battery from your gun. Even if your gun doesn't have an electronic trigger in, it is good practice to get into, so if you do get one with an electronic trigger, you won't knacker your batteries up. Next up, we're going to talk about basic gun maintenance. After an airsoft event, you want to clean your gun and put it into storage. To start off with, make sure the battery is removed, especially if you've got an electronic trigger system. For example, this amoeba has a MOSFET system in, and if you leave batteries in this gun, it will drain them and it will kill them. So triple check that you haven't got a battery in your gun before you put it into storage. Next up, I would advise that you clean off any mud from your gun. Now, you don't have to use anything fancy, and in my experience, the best thing for cleaning airsoft guns is baby wipes. <laughs> But now baby wipes seem to be the most versatile thing when it comes to cleaning anything so if you get a packet of baby wipes that'd be brilliant for getting mud off of your gun. Next up you want to clean your inner barrel. Now it is likely that your airsoft gun came with one of these which is a cleaning slash unjamming rod. And as you can see on one end of the cleaning rod you have an eye and on the other end you have a bevel shaped cut which is designed to push the BBs down the feed pipe from the hop unit if you get a jam. Now you also want to have something like this which is called J cloth this is a sort of cleaning rag, disposable rag sort of thing, so you want to tear a reasonable size piece off. You want to fold it over and then you want to feed it through the eye of your cleaning rod, like so. Next up you want to get some silicon oil, not grease, silicon oil, this is a aerosol spray, and you want to spray a tiny amount on your cleaning cloth. Next up you want to feed your cleaning rod into your inner barrel, push it in gently and you'll eventually feel it hits the hot unit and stop. Do not push the rod in too hard, otherwise you can damage your hot unit. And you want to pull it back out whilst twisting it, like so. And you want to do this a few times, you just want to spin it around in your fingers and scrub it in and out, like so. And then you want to withdraw it. Now the inner barrel of this gun seems to be quite clean already. If the rag is still dirty, what you want to do is you want to put a fresh piece on and not put any silicon oil on it and push it back in. And you want to keep doing this until it comes out clean. Make sure you don't use too much silicon because if you do, it can get on your hot rubber and it can make it slippery, which will affect your hot performance. It's also worth taking batteries out of tack lights and red dots and all that. So if it's in storage, it doesn't get knocked and you don't end up with a flat battery in your sight. And after all of that, you can then put your gun away for storage. And that is how you clean your airsoft gun. So that's my take on an airsoft beginner's guide. If you found this guide useful, then make sure you leave a like, and if you've got mates who want to do airsoft as well, why not share this video with them? Check out the rest of the channel and see if it's what you like, and if you don't want to miss out on any new airsoft content, then make sure you subscribe and enable notifications. Now, without sounding too soppy, I'd like to thank you guys for 100 subscribers. I really do appreciate it. It's the big milestone that I've wanted to hit for a while, and I'm really grateful to, for all of the support, so thank you very much. I have got some more videos on the way. Um, I've got a few unboxing videos I want to do, and just got to wait for them to turn up first and UPS I know there's a lot of things going on right now but I'd appreciate if UPS could at least tell me where my bloody parcel is especially considering I've spent quite a bit on this this unboxing thing I want to do I've bought something I've wanted for a while I'm not gonna tell you what it is you can work it out on the unboxing and I can't work out if it's here or Poland frankly it's just don't know where it is so we'll have to wait for that to turn up I've got another thing coming as well which will be an unboxing video I've got quite a few ideas to do as well and hopefully the lockdowns are not exactly long for this world. I'm hoping that be they'll be finished soon once everybody's once it's all safe, of course, and 
you know, uh, we'll see. But uh, we'll, we'll take each day as it comes. But thank you again for all of the support. I'm going to keep banging on about it. And I don't want to sound soppy, but I really do appreciate it. I feel like I don't deserve 100 subscribers, frankly, but I really do appreciate all the support. So hopefully we'll get some more content out during this relatively quiet, mundane, boring time. You know, lockdowns, no airsoft to do and stuff like that. But we'll find stuff to do. We've been doing it all this time. So again, thank you very much. It's been a blast all of the way to the 100 subscribers. And I really do appreciate all the support. So thank you very much for watching this video. And as always, guys, play fair, play safe. Take care.